MPLS architecture components. We have different types of MPLS routers. Customer Edge or CE router is located on the customer side and connects the customer side to the MPLS network. CE router doesn't perform any MPLS configurations. Provider Edge or PE router is located on the edge of the MPLS network and connects the CE router to the MPLS network. Provider router or P router, it forms the core of the MPLS network and connects PEs to each other. Each MPLS router is known as LSR or label switch router. It must have an ID. This ID identifies itself on the MPLS network and this ID must be unique per each router on the MPLS network. The LSR ID must be configured before any other MPLS configurations to be added on the router. Usually, we configure loopback zero interface on the router with an IP address and this IP address will be the LSR ID. We rely on IGP protocol like OSPF or ISIS to advertise the LSR ID or the loopback zero interface of the router so that all MPLS routers can recognize each other. Once the MPLS router receives LSR ID, it must define an LSP path to it. Without LSP path, the router cannot send any MPLS traffic. The LSP path consists of LSR ID. This is the LSR ID of the routers existing on the MPLS network. And in out label, in out interface. With LSPs, MPLS routers receive traffic destined to a specific LSR ID and labeled with in label. Then they take the decision to forward this traffic to the defined out interface and out label without the need to check the traffic type or service. How can we establish LSP? We have two ways to establish LSPs. Static or dynamic. Static is to configure the LSP manually. So labels must be allocated to each LSR on the network. This process has to be created all over the MPLS network. So this way to configure the LSP in a static way is not a scalable and is not suitable to large MPLS networks. So we have the other way, which is dynamic. Two types of protocols are defined. Label distribution protocol, LDB, or resource reservation protocol, RSVP. Label distribution protocol, LDB is configured on the router on specific interfaces on which the MPLS network is defined. Then the router sends multicast messages to discover LDB peers. Then LDB defines label to each LSR it receives on the network and then distribute the labels to establish LSPs dynamically. 
will show how LDP can operate and establish LSP path. We have three routers in the MPLS network, PE1, P1, and PE2. PE1 is a source of MPLS traffic, so it will be known as the ingress router. PE2 is a destination of traffic, so it will be known as the egress. And P1 is known as transit router because it connects PE1 to PE2. The LSR ID of PE2 is 3.3.3.3 as an example. So all routers in the MPLS network, P1 and PE2, must have LSP path to this LSR ID. It must recognize this LSR ID using IGP protocol. Then after it recognizes this LSR ID, it must establish LSP path for it. To establish LSP path, we configured here LDP protocol. The LDP protocol is configured here on the MPLS interfaces. After that, PE2 will start the label allocation process. The label allocation process starts from the egress router. So it adds its LSR ID 3.3.3.3 in an entry named as FEC or forwarding equivalence class. It adds this entry in the label forwarding table and generate label three. Then label three for network 3.3.3.3 will be sent in an LDP message to P1. Then P1 must check that PE2 is the next hope for 3.3.3.3. If that, it will accept this label and will install LSR ID of PE2 in its label forwarding table and accepts label 3 as out label. The out label will be used to send any traffic destined to 3.3.3.3 and the traffic will exit from 0 slash 0 slash 0 slash 1 in this case. Then P1 will generate a label for 3.3.3.3 and sends this label via LDB to PE1. This label, for example, here is 1025 and will be sent to PE1. Then PE1 will make sure that P1 is the next hop address of 3.3.3.3. Then it will accept 3.3.3.3 as an entry in its label forwarding table and will install the receiving label 1025 as out label and the exit interface or the out interface is 0 slash 0 slash 0. So any traffic sent from PE1 and needs 3.3.3.3 as its destination will be labeled with 1025 and exits from 0 slash 0 slash 0 interface of PE1. Then P1 will receive this traffic, check that it's receiving 1025 as in label. It will swap this label with 3 and forwards traffic labeled with 3 from interface 0 slash 0 slash one then PE2 receives label three and dedicate the traffic to itself because PE2 
is a source of traffic like that traffic is switched from PE1 to P1 to PE2 using labels generated from LDB starting from PE2 P1 to PE1 another example for the LSP path here we have PE2 has LSP path to PE1 LSR ID in its label forwarding table it has FEC for the LSR ID of PE1 1.1.1.1 and the traffic must be labeled with out label 1024 and exits from interface 0 slash 0 slash 0 so the traffic from PE2 will exit from 0 slash 0 slash 0 to PE1 and this traffic will be labeled with 1024 then P1 will check this traffic and finds that the receiving label is 1024 as in label if that it will switch the traffic to interface 0 slash 0 slash 0 because it's recorded in the FEC entry as out interface 0 slash 0 slash 0 and we label the traffic with out label 3. Finally, PE1 will receive the traffic and detects the receiving label as in label 3 and knows that the traffic is destined to 1.1.1.1.